the first session, the first talk for the first session of today uh, would be um, given by uh, Igor Garcia Rastorza uh, with the title Experimental Searches for Axioms. Uh, so I'm uh, uh, looking forward uh, for hearing your talk. So when you're ready. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much to, to the organizer for the invitation to, to give this talk. Yeah, I'm, I'm really uh, excited. I think this, this uh, workshop is um, quite nice, uh, connecting action with uh, um, astrophysics and, 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 and these things. So I think, I think it's really a, a topic, a, a quite original topic. Um, I'm going to try to, to give um, uh, a brief overview of the experimental efforts to search for actions. And as I always say, I mean, I'm, I'm giving these type of seminars uh, now uh, um, relatively often in the, in the last uh, uh, years. And uh, it's, it's impressive the amount of uh, new material that uh, every time I, I give, I have to, to, to deal with, to try to incorporate to the, to the reviews because there are, there is really a lot of action um, and, and, and it's very nice when, when a topic um, in the frontier of, of, of particle physics attracts the attention of uh, so many experimentalists. Uh, as you will see, there are a lot of um, small and not so small scale efforts uh, ongoing. Uh, I apologize if I, if I miss, uh, I, ne I will necessarily miss some, some of them. So, but I, I hope I can give you uh, the, the good impression that um, there is um, a lot of effort and, and very nice prospects for the next uh, years to explore a significant fraction of, of the action parameter space. Uh, so, um, yeah, as I was saying, the, the, the motivation to look for actions is strong enough to attract the, the, a non negligible amount of resources from the experimental community. and and a lot of time from experimentalists to, to think of uh, and implement new, new experiments. Actions, probably the most, uh, the most compelling reason on the theory side to look for actions remains the, to solve the strong CV problem in the standard model. But there are many other scenarios beyond the standard model in which actions or similar particles, action like particles appear. So um, there is, and there is um, plenty of, of, of motivation from, from theory. And most, most importantly, for many of us, actions uh, are a very appealing candidate um, to, to solve the dark matter problem, as you know very well. Uh, and as has been discussed already in, uh, in these uh, sessions, uh, there is a very peculiar connection with astrophysics, which is not the case uh, for other dark matter candidates. And we look also to astrophysical objects to, as, a, uh, as a help to, to detect actions or to detect hints for actions. So as I said, there is uh, the, the current uh, technology for action detection is um, um, has uh, uh, a good fraction of the parameter space at reach of of, of, these, of current sensitivities and near future sensitivities, as you will see in a moment. And there is uh, a rapid increase in experimental effort to to search for this particle. So we will be dealing with this type of plots that you know already very well because it has been presented in, by other speakers in which uh, we focus um, uh, mostly on the action photon coupling because most of the experimental efforts are uh, exploiting this coupling um, uh, to detect the action, but this is not the full story. There, there are, of course, initiatives to, to test um, all the couplings to, uh, to electrons, to nucleons, and so on. And our, our target is this uh, famous um, yellow band that we have here in which we believe the QCD action to, to, to live, but of course, in a more generic uh, um, view of action like particles or even more generically weakly, interact, weakly interacting sub EV particles, WISPs, um, we, want to, we want to explore as, as much as possible of this uh, parameter space that, that we have here. So this sets a little bit the, the, the set, the, the stage for experimentalists. Um, of course, um, the action phenomenology is in part uh, fixed by the by the paradigm of the action of the QCD action, but uh, part of it is free and it depends on the particular way these uh, actions are implemented in the standard model, no? the action the action model. No? And we have these two famous benchmarks, the KSVZ actions, the DFZ actions. The first ones are also called hadronic actions, 
with no coupling with no coupling with leptons at, at three level, and the DFS set actions do couple with with electrons. And okay, this is a very very quick review of the of the of the main ingredients from more generic to less generic. Uh, we have this gluon coupling, which is a necessary ingredient of any QCD action. We know that the action must have a mass, uh, although it's very weak, very very small, and 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 depending on the on this energy scale from the Chapin energy scale. So at the end of the day, we don't know what is the mass of this particle. And then we have the photon coupling, which is a necessary ingredient, almost a necessary ingredient from any, any action model. Uh, and we may have additional, additional ingredients like coupling to fermions, electrons, nucleons as well. But of course, just to just to remind everybody that we need to keep our mind open. Um, uh, this does not necessarily be the, the whole story, and especially in, in recent years, there is a lot of phenomenological efforts to to build new models beyond these uh, these conventional frameworks. And for example, in, in this in this slide taken from from particular while, well, um, you can see that uh, theorists can now uh, build models in which QCD actions are well up beyond this yellow band. So okay. the, this yellow band remains our target our conventional target for experiments, but um, we may have surprises, so we, we need to keep our minds open. Uh, uh, a few words very briefly about uh, the role of actions as dark matter, because of course, this is a very strong motivation to look for particles. So one, wonder, one may wonder, what do we know? Um, do, can we fix our um, target uh, uh, region in parameter space, taking into account that we want the action to be, or we would like the action to be a nice star matter candidate. Well, in principle, yes, but still there is quite some uncertainties. And at the end of the day, we can say that the, the right uh, action dark matter density can, can be realized in a, in a wide range of, uh, of mass values for this particle. So, uh, of course, there are, there are some, some ranges that are in some sense preferred. And um, we have already heard in, in previous talks the um, these uh, uh, prescriptions no? uh, related to pre-inflation models whether or post-inflation models, whether the inflation happens before or after the, the pitch-aping transition. We have different, different ways of production of, of actions, of cold actions in the early universe by the uh, action realignment mechanism uh, or and by the decay of topological defects. And this uh, gives different different uh, predictions to the to the action mass that is uh, preferred um, as as uh, dark matter candidate but uh, as you see at the end of the day we have very large ranges in, in both cases um, more towards high higher mass part for for post inflation models more towards lower masses in the case of pre inflation models but okay quite quite open issue uh, still this is, this is a nice plot that I, uh, I like to show sometimes from, from this paper in which the authors make a Bayesian analysis of, of these considerations. And at the end of the analysis, you get the, the posterior uh, probability or credibility of where the action can be in the parameter space. And you can see that the, the cloud of, of, of this posterior probability is quite, quite spread over, over a large values of, uh, of, of action masses, even, even very low, very low masses are still still possible, and, and very high masses also. Okay, this is yes, sort of an introduction. Let, let me go to the to the topic of the presentation, which is how to detect uh, the action. And of course, we may have uh, actions produced in the lab entirely in the laboratory with laboratory sources, or we we can we can look for uh, natural sources of actions in the laboratory. Actions can be produced by um, conversion of, of photons in strong magnetic fields, or uh, also um, action, action like particle fields uh, can be produced from macroscopic bodies hmm, in the case of fermionic couplings. And uh, as you will see in a moment, these are very interesting opportunities to, to it at Alps, but um, maybe uh, it's, it's going to be difficult to find uh, QCD actions in, in laboratory sources. So, we need to resort to natural sources, and in this case, we have, of course, um, in the in the assumption that our matter is made of actions, 
we have a very strong, very, very intense uh, flux of actions in our galactic halo. Um, very, very uh, non-relativistic actions here at, at the left part of the of this of this uh, plot, and and probably the, the, the other opportunity to eat that actions is offered by by astrophysical bodies, in particular by the sun being the, the closest star. Uh, with actions which are quite different from the dark matter actions are relativistic actions. Uh, and they also offer opportunity for detection. So these three, these three uh, categories are, are used to, to classify a little bit the different efforts uh, in this table, uh, depending on which is the source of action that one is um, using. Uh, we have experiments looking for relic action, dark matter actions, experiments looking for actions in the laboratory, and experience looking for uh, solar actions. And these three categories are nicely complementary. They use different technologies. They, they use different assumptions. Of course, laboratory actions is, is the, let's say the, the more robust way to detect actions, but of course, um, uh, the, more, the more challenging in terms of available fluxes. And um, on the other hand, dark matter actions offer a, a nice opportunity for detection because you have a huge amount of actions there to be detected. But of course, you rely on this, on this assumption that actions must be the totality of dark matter. And the solar actions is uh, some, uh, somewhere in the middle in, in this respect, because you can um, um, uh, you still enjoy a high flux of actions from the sun. And, and this flux is, however, uh, more or less guaranteed is a necessity of uh, of just uh, uh, the axon photon coupling in the, the theory, independently of the role, the cosmological role of the axon. And you will see that also regarding regarding the the uh, proposals uh, to to detect or, or the maturity of the technologies, they are also at a different uh, status every every category. So let me say a few words for each of them and, 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 and tell you a, a little bit the status of, of um, every type of experiment. So in the, in the, in the first case for laboratory actions, okay, the, the, main, the main category is the so-called light shining through wall experiments, which is uh, depicted in, 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 this, in this slide. You have a strong photon source that is used to create actions with strong uh, magnetic field, then you put a opaque walls to stop the photons and actions can go through it and they must be converted back into 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 visible into photons that can be detected by another magnetic field so uh, there have been several uh, implementations of this technique um, okay this is this is basically the same the same uh, um, scheme but a little bit more more refined uh, um, the experiments are exactly as, as, as they are uh, they are depicted here. You have a strong uh, photon source, that usually a laser, that uh, goes through a, a magnetic field, strong magnetic field, which is uh, preferably uh, put into a into a layout that is uh, long uh, to to make uh, to increase the chance for these photons to convert into actions, and then these actions are reconverted back into photons in a, after the after the world. And then we have the 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 enhanced version of, of this experiment uh, that exploits uh, resonance both in the in the in the conversion and the detection volumes by using these um, uh, uh, fabric pair cavities that that must be much and in phase between them in order to to increase the probability of of conversion by by a big factor so uh, the alps collaboration is, is probably the best uh, uh, representative of this um, category of experiments. You have here a picture of what was the ALPS-1 experiment already quite some years ago. And now uh, very um, uh, recently, the, the, the construction of this ALPS-2 experiment at DESI has, has finished and commissioning is ongoing. So we'll soon have data from, from this experiment. Uh, this, this incarnation of the, of the light shining through wall experiment is, includes 12 uh, plus 12 uh, dipole magnets like the one you have you see here uh, 12 for the uh, production of actions and 12 for the detection so this is by far the, the largest uh, implementation of, of this type of of, uh, of setup with uh, with of course uh, resonant regeneration implement, implemented and the, uh, on the right you see the, the same plot as before but concentrated in the 
in the values of the coupling relevant for this type of experiment. So this gray region is the, the region explored so far by, by previous experiments like ALPS1, and ALPS2 will, will push this sensitivity uh, several orders of magnitude be beyond the astrophysical bounds and the helioscope bounds that are represented in blue here. So this is the ALPS2 projection. Uh, so this will be um, um, a first for this type of experiments, uh, exploring uh, uh, a fraction of, of unexplored so far as parameter space, but it's still uh, unfortunately a bit far from the from the yellow band that it, that is here. There are other other experiments. There are also plans for for even even more stronger versions in the in the future. There are conversations in the Physics Beyond Colliders group at CERN of uh, the Jura project that. It would be like a even even larger implementation of this type of experiment, piggybacking you know, on future developments of uh, dipole magnets for a future accelerator. Um, and there are also experiments uh, which are uh, also laboratory experiments, but they look for polarization uh, change due to axioms. This is the the principle of the uh, famous Pivilas experiment. And also uh, similarly, there are conversations at CERN. Uh, uh, for an improved experiment um, in the in the context of the physics, physics beyond colliders that is called BNB at CERN. So before moving to another category, it's a, a couple of words about uh, also experiments that, uh, um, strictly speaking, they are they must be categorized as laboratory experiments. They are looking for action mediated microscopic forces. Um, actions um, actions as being such light particles could could produce uh, microscopic effects beyond, beyond gravity that, that could be measured by this type of experiments. This type of, of, of uh, searches has been done uh, many times in the past, not necessarily in the context of actions, but when translated into action sensitivity, usually they, they, they are not very competitive. However, one, one deserves special mention, which is the Ariadne experiment that was proposed a few years ago and uh, exploits uh, much more sensitive techniques based on NMR techniques in which uh, you have a sample that could, could uh, detect the effect of a microscopic force uh, action mediated uh, produced by a rotating source mass. And okay, this, this technique is not sensitive to the action photon coupling, but it would be sensitive to, to uh, products of fermion couplings that can be translated into directly into the uh, term similar to the theta term in the Lagrangian. So, under some assumptions of, of, of the potential presence of CP violating effects in beyond the standard physics, uh, these type of experiments could be sensitive to 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 the action. So it's a, it's a nice it's a nice idea that is being being uh, explore, uh, explored experimentally. So let me move to uh, uh, dark matter actions. Here the, the the main concept is the well known CQB uh, halo scope that is based on the use of a, of a, uh, a resonant uh, microwave cavity uh, that is placed under um, uh, inside the magnetic field. The magnetic field, as usual, turns the action into photons, but the cavity um, allows to increase um, the, the signal produced by these um, uh, photons by a factor Q, where Q is the, is the quality factor of the cavity. Of course, this happens only for actions that have, um, um, uh, that match the frequency to the, to the resonant frequency of the cavity. Because we don't know what is the mass of the action, of course, this, this, is, a, this is a big problem. If we, if we had um, this information, the, um, the the prospect to detect an action would be relatively easy with a tabletop experiment. Almost you could you could detect an action. It's, it's a tiny signal, but still, by integrating sufficiently long, you 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 could you could detect it. But the fact that you don't know the action mass and the and the um, uh, range of sensitivity is so so thin because these Q factors are of the order of ten to the five or so. Um, then you need to you need to devise a, a way. To uh, tune this cavity mechanically to change this uh, resonance uh, frequency, and this made the experiment the experiment much more challenging. So uh, ADMX is the is the must be acknowledged as the as the pioneer and the 
and the most important experiment in this category. They have been working uh, with uh, this goal for many, many years, more than 25 years of data taking and r and in many, in many respects. And many of the newer projects that are now in the landscape, they, they, they are based on, on, on ideas or, 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 or r and that were started by, by EDMX in some sense. So um, the ADMX produced data already quite many, many years ago. Uh, but the, the latest um, stage um, using um, uh, very, very uh, cold uh, temperature, dilution refrigerator, and with much higher sensitivity started in 2018. Uh, you have in this plot uh, the different releases of data that ADMX has been done in the last year, 2018 in blue, 2019, and more recently, the red part was released last year. This is the same plot as, as always. This is mass of, of the action. This is action photon coupling. And these two lines are the, these two benchmarks. So the yellow band is not depicted here, but mostly is, is encompassed by, by these two lines. But um, you, can, you can check the, the numbers. Uh, this is a very small uh, slice of the, of the big parameter space that uh, I showed before. This is from 2.6 to 4.2 ele micro electron volts. So this is a very, very thin uh, uh, ranges of, of action map that is explored every time this, this, is, this type of data is released. And this is uh, due to the fact that uh, what I may just mentioned, that the experiment is only sensitive to a very particular action mass at any time. So at the end, what, um, what you see here, these little spikes is the envelope of many different uh, steps in frequency and from of uh, minutes duration, each one of them. So there are many, many different uh, pressure uh, frequency steps inside inside this, and still the the span in action mass is, is very small. So this is the big challenge of these type of experiments. You have a very good sensitivity in action photocopying, but for a very narrow uh, mass range. So as you can see. Um, uh, despite this caveat, the, the, sensitivity of, the sensitivity of IBMX is extremely good. It, they have reached the most um, uh, pessimistically coupled uh, benchmark, um, the EFS set, the down part of the, of the, of the yellow band for, for these masses. And, and they, they continue taking data all the time. So the prospect for the next year is to expand this, um, this region to, to higher masses. Uh, so every, as I said, every, every, every step, they are exploring a different slice of parameter space. So if the action is at some point here, uh, they will arrive one day that from one day to another, you see a discovery. So this is something very exciting. So we can have, we can have a discovery soon at any time. But of course, uh, as, you, as I showed before, there is motivation to look uh, in a much wider uh, range of masses. So, what can we do to, to go faster to, to higher masses, for example? No? So this is a little bit the, the, the figure of merit of these type of experiments. And you want, you want to increase these parameters as much as possible. So all these, all these experiments are always doing R&D to increase, to increase these, these parameters. By going to higher masses means that um, you need necessarily to use lower volumes because the volume also sets the frequency and the resonant frequency. So this is the, the main problem. By going to higher masses, you lose sensitivity. You need to compensate the loss of volume somehow. So that what makes uh, applying straight away, applying the Haloscope, the ADMX concept to higher masses is, um, is, is challenging. You need, to, you need to compensate this sensitivity loss somehow. And there are many, many, every one of these parameters gives you an idea how to, how to improve this. You can use higher magnetic fields, you can somehow uh, decouple the, 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 the connection between volume and, and, and resonant frequency by, by coupling more, more than one cavity somehow and increase the, the instrumented volume by reducing the, the noise of the sensors or by increasing the, the quality factor. And there is plenty of R&D going in the, in, the, in the community. And, and here I put some, some examples like the like the projects that have been tested in the CAST magnet, both the RADIS project and the CASCAP project, uh, playing with different geometries to increase the volume of the, of the detectors um, 
So for example, in this concept, um, you see several, several cavities uh, connected with irises. So at the end of the day, uh, is the volume of one single cavity which fixes the frequency. However, the volume that enters in the figure of minute is the total volume. So you increase the volume without, without um, um, affecting the, the frequency. A similar concept is done in Korea in the cap center, but with a pizza-like setup. There, there are several groups working in, in improving the Q factors with, for example, with superconducting coatings. This is a picture of the quarks uh, cavity that is um, with this uh, superconducting coating uh, can increase the, the, Q the Q factor. A very appealing uh, connection that is being exploited uh, recently is um, uh, in order to decrease, um, of course, in, in order to decrease the noise, uh, which is parametrizing this figure made with this temperature. Of course, this temperature is not just the physical temperature. It is the physical temperature, but you have always a, an additional, additional term due to the technology you are using to detect these, these photons. No? Um, so, of course, you need to, to decrease the physical temperature. That's why most of these experiments are moving to, to dilution refrigerators to, to cool down the cavity to very low temperatures, but at some point you you, you face the, the, the so-called um, standard quantum limit. The, the signal that you measure is not um, is not anymore linked to the temperature because you see the vacuum fluctuation. So uh, a way to, to overcome this limit, which is by the way uh, already uh, reached by, by, by experiments, ADMX or Haystack or or quacks also are taking data or have been taking data already uh, close to the standard quantum limit in terms of, 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 uh, of noise. Uh, and a very important milestone is the one achieved by Haystack uh, last year, in which for the first time they use squeezed states to reduce the noise beyond this, this quantum limit. They, they, are, they reach a factor of two um, of effective uh, improvement beyond the standard quantum limit, which doesn't sound uh, too much, but it's it's um, it it can be improved in the future with you know, with improved uh, technology in, in the squeezing of the of this state. So it's it's important milestone. It was published in, in Nature last year. There are many more efforts that I, I cannot cover all of them. Um, well, I already mentioned K-STAC, the CAP um, the CAP um, Center for Action and Precision Physics that was uh, uh, created some years ago in Korea. They are really very strongly pushing for um, action detection with different different setups. They have already published a few a few um, exclusion plots at different mass ranges, and they are doing a lot of R and D. ADMX is also doing a lot of R and D apart from the main apart from the main experiment. For example, they have this sidecar, which is just, which is a small um, small uh, cavity sensitive to ha at higher masses. And they are the Quax project uh, uh, in Infrascati doing uh, many R&D, not, not only the one I mentioned on the superconducting coating, but also uh, setups to uh, using um, uh, improved amplifications and, and sensitivity to action electron coupling and so on. I already mentioned the RADIS and the CASCAP project at CERN in, in the CAS magnet, and also the, there is uh, the organ experiment in Australia. So this is uh, my own compilation of, of the results that have been published. I, I believe uh, I don't miss anyone regarding haloscopes. You can see ADMX is the main player here. All the all the plot I showed before uh, now put it in the in the big context is is only this this range here, but with very good sensitivity, uh, well into the yellow band that here is is, is horizontal in this this type of plot. And then you have uh, the different results from other experiments, the CAP experiments in this, in this three-point haystack at the higher, higher masses, radius, wax, organ. So you see there, there are many new players in the, in the quest for action dark matter, now accompanying ADMX, typically at higher masses, but still plenty of space to be explored um, uh, still, due to the fact that every of these experiments is only sensitive to very, very narrow uh, mass range. So what to do to, to speed up things? There are new concepts that go beyond the conventional haloscope, and uh, there, are, there is a lot of literature now with new ideas, uh, very, very, very recent ideas. 
I only mention a few of them, the ones that are attracting uh, some uh, experimental activity. Uh, probably the, the most relevant one is the one that is called dish antenna and the dielectric hyoscopes. In the dish antenna, we have, instead of a cavity, we give a completely the, the concept of a cavity, we have just a surface. If this surface is spherical, then the action dark matter, uh, if there is a magnetic field, of course, here, produces uh, an emission of electromagnetic wave that is uh, perpendicular to the surface. If the surface is spherical, this, this can be concentrated in a, in a point and, and, and detected with a small detector. Of course, in this concept, you don't have the Q amplification factor of a cavity. So you, somehow you have to compensate for this and, and therefore you need very high, very large areas. This concept is being, is being followed experimentally by the Baras group in Hamburg. There is also a very recent proposal by US uh, groups, the BREAD, which is a, a, a modified version, better adapted for a solenoidal uh, magnet. And then we have the dielectric halo school, which is a little bit of a um, hybrid between this and the, and the resonant uh, cavity, in which you have more than one of these surfaces. Um, they are dielectric, so the dielectric slabs, so they are transparent to the to the emission of the previous surface, and they are carefully placed so that the final emission is boosted by the fact that you have more than one layer contributing to this, to this emission. And also there is some uh, resonant effect, some, co some constructive interference between the different waves. And if, this, this, if these disks are carefully placed, then you can, you can get a, a boost factor that is, that is important, not at the level of the Q factors of the, of the um, uh, standard heloscopes, but it's still quite big. Uh, and this is the layout of the Mad Max experiment that is uh, strongly pushing for this idea. This is a, a stack of 80 disks placed inside a big, very strong magnetic field of 10 Tesla. And the emission of these disks are concentrated by this, this mirror and then uh, detected here. And with these parameters, which are uh, very challenging, there is a lot of R&D still ongoing to, to demonstrate the feasibility of this experiment with small scale prototypes. But if you translate these, these parameters into the uh, sensitivity plot, you have a very, very competitive sensitivity at much relatively higher, higher masses compared to with the EMX. Uh, OK. Um, and this is the same plot as I just showed, but uh, um, over printing some of the, uh, some of the projections of, of, of the different collaborations, not, not all of them. Uh, you can see here the Mad Max uh, projection uh, to, to illustrate that the, uh, this concept, they, they show promise uh, of uh, in the next future to uh, explore a non negligible fraction of the interest in parameter space. Um, of course, uh, one word of caution is that um, some of these projections are more conservative than, than the others, so I'm mixing things. Some of, some of these projections still rely on a non negligible R and D for that. It's to be done. But about going to lower masses, which is also motivated. Uh, so in principle, the haloscope concept can, can easily be made uh, larger. So it's um, technologically feasible, simpler, but of course it's, it's expensive because you need a huge magnet. And there are a few initiatives uh, like uh, the clash proposal that was, was uh, turned into the flash proposal more recently because they changed magnet, they first proposed to use the cloy magnet in Frascati, but the cloy magnet is now used uh, for something else. So they, they turn into the Finuda magnet, which is another, another magnet also existing at, at Frascati. Uh, there are plans in the ADMX collaboration to, to, to load especially the cavity with, uh, with uh, dielectrics and push these to, to lower values. And we have also the prospects to use uh, future magnets in the community, like the baby Jackson or the Jackson magnets that I will mention in a while also for to do these things. And I, I point to this recent workshop uh, that these ideas were discussed recently. And I need also to, to say a few words about um, this concept of the pickup coils and resonance circuits that allows for sensitivity to even lower masses. But I think this is represented by a different talk in this uh, workshop. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna skip it because you will hear from 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 an, an expert. So let me let me move to the last part of the of my talk, which is the solar actions. Um, here, um, 
the situation is different in the, from the experimental point of view in the sense that what we expect from axions are um, uh, X-rays that are produced by the Primakov conversion of the plasma, plasma uh, photons in the, in the core of the sun. So this prediction that is depicted here by this black line is, is well known since, since, since long ago. It's a, it's a very robust prediction uh, that only requires the existence of a coupling to photon. So the non-detection of such a signal allows for a roast um, uh, rejection of, of in the parameter space of the action. But we have uh, additional possibilities uh, of uh, um, production of actions in the sun, for example, if the action couples with electrons, we have the so-called ABC, solar action flux, that has this shape. So it's picked at lower energy, slightly lower energies than the prima actions. And you have, in addition, these characteristic peaks that in case of a positive signal could, could help identify uh, the origin of, of this, of this um, uh, signal. Uh, this is something that is known since many years ago, but it's it's interesting to see that there are uh, present activity in this in this context. Um, there are studies of uh, yet um, uh, new results in, in this respect that uh, were not studied previously. For example, we have uh, the possibility of uh, photons uh, from the sun interacting with macroscopic solar magnetic fields, and this produces uh, different populations of actions depending on whether you consider longitudinal or, or transversal plasmons. And, and so on, but um, but they are they rely on the action photon coupling, so they could be detectable by by experiments like uh, like baby Yaxo or Yaxo, provided they are they are adapted with um, detectors of much lower energies, because you see that these actions peak at uh, much lower than than the than the KeV. And in addition, we have a very recent result here. Uh, uh, to study the possibility of detecting actions coming from uh, monochromatic uh, uh, nuclear transitions, in particular the, the emission of 14 keV actions from the iron 57, which is uh, based on the action nucleon coupling. Um, so this gives a, a, another window of opportunity from, for helioscopes. So action helioscopes, which is the the, uh, the name of the experiments in this, in this category are based on, a, on an initial pr proposal by CKB in the same paper that also the helioscope concept is, is proposed. It's a very, very seminal, very important paper from, from CKB. It was later refined by Bapiver and Georg, you, uh, proposing the use of a buffer gas to increase sensitivity at higher masses. And basically, the concept is, is, is very similar to the to the light shining through world, but in this case, we have only the, the conversion volume. We have a very long magnet that is pointing to the sun, and these actions are converted into X rays in the, in, the, in the magnetic field. And these X rays can be focused by X ray telescopes uh, and detected by, by very low background uh, X ray detectors in the focal, the focal spot of these optics. This is the cast experiment that was already. Uh, mentioned and, 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 and described by other uh, speakers in, in the conference that has been taking data for two decades at CERN and finally was ended uh, last year. And this is, uh, it represents the state of the art of, of this type of experiments. We have a one, one magnet here from the, the commission from the LHC with, um, with X-ray detectors at both ends of the, of the magnet. And, and um, this is the first helioscope testing this uh, concept of focusing X-rays with optics from X-ray astronomy and also detecting with low background techniques. This is the main uh, result, uh, um, the, the main legacy of, of CAS has been the, the most stringent um, uh, uh, upper limit to the action photon coupling coming from the last phase of the experiment. This is a, this is a, a, a micro mega detector, very low background detector placed at the focal uh, spot of an optics that is placed inside this cave that you see here. Uh, the, the background level of this detector has been uh, um, record in the history of CAST. You see this is the, the, the action data taken in six months of data with this detector. Um, and this is the region where uh, we expect the image of the sun in actions or projected on the detector. This is a calibration data for, for comparison. And you can see three counts here during the full data taking 
uh, and one account is the expectation for, for, for background. This uh, gave rise to this limit, that is uh, this 0.66, uh, 10 to minus 10 g d minus one, which is the comparable to, with the best astrophysical limit uh, on the action photon coupling this widely um, uh, referred to by in the community. And now the next step is moving to, to JAXA, which is the next generation helioscope that was already uh, conceptually proposed some years ago. This is a picture of what we aim for the far future. This, the concept is the same. You have this big magnet with different optics placed and different bores of the, of the magnets pointing to the sun. These optics concentrate the, the signal the, in photons into small detectors that, that are placed inside these shieldings that you see depicted here. So it's the same concept of cast, but much larger uh, in, in, uh, in size. And okay, the goal of the, of the collaboration is now building an um, intermediate step that will have sensitivity to actions at an intermediate uh, scale between cast and the final Jackson that is called baby Jackson. And this, it has been approved uh, to be built at DESI. And, and, and as I say, it, fulfill, it fulfills the role of a prototype for the final Jackson, but at the same time, getting relevant physics at an intermediate scale. And this is a little bit the, the, the situation in the helioscope front. You have the, the result of cast, which dominates the, the landscape here. And, and with, the, with sensitivity to QCD actions in the high mass part, the high mass range of, of the yellow band, these, these additional uh, steps that you see here, this wiggly line, it, it was accomplished by adding these buffer gas that I briefly mentioned. By adding a buffer gas inside the magnetic field, you can, uh, you can increase the sensitivity to, to higher masses of, of helioscopes. And this is something that is also forcing for baby Jackson and Jackson that will have uh, this correspondingly lower sensitivity lines and with respect to cast, and therefore will enter the, the yellow band in a, in, a, in a big fraction between the milli electron volt to the, to the electron volt. So this is, uh, I finished here my, my presentation, just uh, in, going back to the, to, the, to the big plot of many orders of magnitude and putting the, uh, the, three, the three frontiers, the laboratory frontier, helioscope and, and haloscopes, also with the, some of the prospects that I mentioned very briefly, the ones of Yaxo here, the ones with the different haloscope project here, to illustrate that there is, there is um, very nice prospects that in the, in the future, near and not so near some of these lines, uh, a large fraction of the of the parameter space of the action can be can be explored. So I think it's um, it's a very nice um, uh, time for experimental stretches for actions with uh, a lot of new interest, a lot of new ideas, consolidation of of detection uh, efforts that are already uh, going on for years, but of course appearing new ideas appearing to tackle new regions. And as, as I, I just said, a large fraction of the parameter space at reach of near future experiments. So there is a, there is chances of discovery. So uh, I, I finish with this positive statement. So thank you very much for your attention and I'm happy to answer any question. Thank you very much for uh, this uh, very complete and uh, nice review. So let's see if there is uh, any question. So I will start because actually I have one. Uh, can you briefly comment on, uh, because these are uh, light shining through the wall experiments that I've, I'm not familiar with. Can you spend a few words about this Jura uh, stacks to experiments, uh, yep. these proposals? Because they look very powerful, uh, I don't know. Yeah, they are very powerful, but, but, but they are uh, in a, at a very early stage of um, discussion. Um, yeah, oops. Well, I don't think I have much material here. Yeah. Yeah, here. So, uh, yeah. so Alps 2 is, is, is a reality. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take data. Um, and OK, Jura is an um, extrapolation of what one could do uh, in the far future by, by, um, by using, for example, a large amount of uh, dipole magnets that that could be built not specifically for this, but for something else, like, uh, for example, a new uh, 
a new post LHC accelerator at CERN. Yes, yes. And you could, um, you could uh, profit from this uh, uh, technology to do, to do this type of experiment. Mm -hmm. Of course, the, the, the parameters entering into this uh, Jura projection are, are, very, are very aggressive. Like, I, I, don't, I don't have the numbers here, but something like uh, 500 uh, meters of uh, detection line, things like that. So um, it's, it's more of an exercise of what could happen if there is a very strong uh, motivation to, to search for an action. For example, in a post discovery, uh, in a post discovery stage, if we have a signal from from a heliscope or from a heliscope, and you really you really know there is something you want to create in the laboratory, for the laboratory like or laboratory research. Yes, sure. So, um, is there any question from the audience? Okay, so, uh, ah, yes, there is a question by Oscar, uh, please. Hola, Igor, que tal? Hola, que tal? Uh, no, it's a very simple uh, question. I would like to know um, uh, in the status uh, uh, of uh, Baby Yaxo and what is your um, uh, predictions for the commissionings? Okay, so um, Baby Yaxo, has already finished um, a conceptual design uh, more than one year ago. And, and, and there is um, very strong support now uh, secure for, from DESI. DESI has approved the project and, and first actions, first construction actions are already uh, ongoing. And uh, the, the latest uh, important, uh, let, let's say, strategic milestone is the involvement of, of CERN that has been also, also secured recently. And we need CERN to build this magnet. So as you know, uh, the, 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 main, the main feature of the project of, of Baby Jackson and Jackson is that this magnet is, for the first time in, a, in, a, in an Axon helioscope, it will be built specifically for Axon. So it will not be... Uh, reduced from, from some other experiments. So, uh, but this is a big effort. So this is a big magnet and we need CERN to, to help here. And we, we have already secured this from CERN. And okay, this took a bit longer than expected, but the, the project is, is, is ongoing and, and will be built in the next, in the next years. Our, our current official commissioning date is uh, 2025, although I'm, I'm afraid this is going to be delayed by, by several technical problems in the, in the procurement of, of, of new cable for the, for the magnet. But uh, okay, the, the, the collaboration is, is fully working into this now, so it's, uh, it's going to happen. Okay, so if there is uh, no further uh, urgent question, I will move to, I will thank uh, Igor again for the very nice talk and I will move to the second speaker of today.